Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 16.1 RC or release candidate has been out for a few days to developers and public beta testers. And I wanted to talk about a couple new features that have been found since the initial iOS 16 RC is out video that I made, as well as the overall experience. I've been using it full time on my 14 pro max and many of you have been using it as well. So I had a YouTube community poll and this time, by the time of this video, we have 12,000 votes with 157 comments. I've read all of those to get the best understanding of what this update's been like for most people so far. We'll also talk about iOS 15.7.1 as that's releasing soon as well. And also toward the end of the video, we'll read some of your comments and talk about when to expect the public releases of iPad OS 16 and Mac OS as well, along with iOS 16.1. Now, the first thing is a new feature or a new change in the update. When you go and take a screenshot, if I take a screenshot here, go in, tap done. This was there with earlier betas and it's something I didn't mention in the what's new video. You have the option to copy and delete or delete the screenshot. That part itself isn't new, but they've changed the way it looks. So if we take a screenshot on 16.0.3 hit done, it comes up from the bottom. Now it's in the upper left. So they've just changed the menu. It also goes along better with dark mode and just sort of fits in a little bit better with the overall theme of the OS. Also, thanks to a viewer for sending this in. This is a new music notification style that's showing up. I actually haven't had any music notifications, but it looks a little bit different. Now you have a full album artwork picture here along with the album artist and then also the song below it. And then you have the option to go to the album and hit play. So that's something that looks really great. Hopefully we see more and more of those. One of the features we're still lacking though, with the iPhone 14 series is satellite connectivity. The groundwork is here as far as the code. And I've showed some of that before. Thanks to Steve Mosier for pointing that out, not only on Twitter, but showing me as well. If we go into Twitter, you can see here with beta four, we had all of the different icons and everything else for satellite connectivity. We'll have a way to actually try this and see what it looks like with some samples once it launches. So maybe it's coming with the next version of iOS. We don't really know, but at least the groundwork is there and they're getting ready for that. So that should work soon, hopefully for iOS and iPhone 14 models. One thing we're also lacking has to do with iPad. We still don't have external display support. This was supposed to be released with iPad OS 16 when it releases to the public, but we don't have external display support. So that's something I used early on. It was great, but quite buggy. And that's probably why they pulled it for now. So that will be coming in a future update. I was hoping we'd have it fairly soon, but unfortunately we won't have it just yet. iOS 15.7.1 RC released alongside iOS 16.1 RC. And this was a bit of a surprise and it's nice that they're supporting devices that no longer can receive iOS 16 or aren't supported with that update. However, it's causing an issue for people on 15.7 still that are on devices that have face ID. So maybe you didn't upgrade to iOS 16. Some people are having issues with that. So when they do release this, whether that be Monday or a different day, I would expect a different build to address those issues. So those of you that want to stay on iOS 15 can do that hopefully. And and still have face ID working properly. If you have a device that uses touch ID like this six plus or six S plus rather, it works fine. There's no issues there. It's just with face ID. Now there's some bugs that go along with iOS 16.1 RC, despite it being released to the public. That's a little bit unfortunate, but there's still some issues here and there. For example, let me turn my volume down. If I play a song and then swipe home, Oftentimes when I'm going into the, the dynamic Island, I swipe home, it will stutter. So sometimes I tap on the dynamic Island, go back, maybe go into podcasts. Maybe we'll play a podcast, swipe home. Sometimes it stutters or doesn't go into the dynamic Island properly. Of course, it's not doing it now, but it often does this over and over. So sometimes it works fine. Sometimes it doesn't, but that seems to be a little bug that I have all of the time. So if we close out of them and then we try again, We'll hit play, swipe home, and it's working fine again. So sometimes it just doesn't work properly. Also music is freezing for me in my car when it's connected to Bluetooth. I'll be playing a song driving down the road and all of a sudden it just stops. I'll actually have to go on my phone, 
close out of the app, go back in, hit play, and then it will work again. I'm having this issue. I've had it two or three times on my phone directly. I've tried to hard reboot it and it still comes back. So definitely some odd bugs there. That also goes along with some odd bugs that people are having with Bluetooth sync issues. So when you're connected to headphones or CarPlay, I'm hearing some of you say you have Bluetooth sync issues with iPhone 14s and all the other iPhones with this version. And the same is true with AirPods. So I've had some people say that when they're watching my videos with AirPods, it'll just crash YouTube or it just won't work and it will be out of sync. There seems to be something odd with Bluetooth and maybe they updated it and they'll need to update it again. So AirPods Pro 2 specifically have a sync bug that's kind of strange. So if you're experiencing that, just know that quite a few people have this. And again, like I said, when people are watching YouTube, they're seeing the same thing. So hopefully they'll update that along with an AirPods update, hopefully the time iOS 16.1 releases. With iPadOS 16.1, it's been pretty good as far as stability goes. Once they removed the external monitor support, it seemed to be more stable. And if we go into settings, battery life is just what it has been all along. Not very great, five to six hours of screen on time. So two hours and 25 minutes of screen on time with about 30% of my battery used. So probably better than it has been, but again, it's not that great, even though the battery hasn't degraded much on this iPad. So after using it, of course, the new M2 is coming out soon, but after using it, it seems to be okay. It probably will never be back to 10 hours of battery life. There's just something about iPad OS at this point. However, everything else, as far as smoothness, stability, and everything else has been quite good on this iPad. But let me know if you have an iPad and how it's going for you. Now, the number one complaint of iOS 16.1 is battery life. That seems to be the thing I'm seeing the most. However, after three days, quite a few people are telling me it's getting better. It took a while to complete whatever was going on in the background and does seem to be a problem for some people still, but it took longer than usual. And maybe that has to do with iCloud photo sharing. If you enable that, you're sharing with someone, maybe it's syncing things in the background, but in general, it seems to be okay for some people, not great for others. If we go into my settings, we go down to battery and I'm at 100% on my latest device. If we go to the last 10 days, you'll see yesterday wasn't really great. Five hours and eight minutes of screen on time, three hours and three minutes of screen off time. And I used about 80% of my battery. So that would mean I'm only getting about seven hours of screen on time. However, depending on the day, sometimes it's better, sometimes it's worse, but today actually seems to be okay. 25% of my battery and I had one hour and 40 minutes of screen on time. Depending on who you ask, it depends on how the actual battery is. Some people say it's really good. Others say it's not. So it really depends who you ask, but most people seem to have some issues with battery this time around. We really thought we'd see an iOS 16.1 RC2, maybe on Friday or today, and we never saw that. So maybe we'll have a different build on Monday when iOS 16.1 releases. Also, the performance overall seems to be good with the exception of that stutter. So whether that's on an older phone, an iPhone 11 or an 8 or any of those, performance in general seems to be good. So we'll let it load here just a moment. It's pulling over Wi-Fi. You'll see it loaded. We can scroll through. If we go over to, well, let's just go into fitness. I haven't been in this app today, not on this device anyway. And if we go into, let's go into the camera, opens nice and quick really no issues with performance, just that occasional stutter sometimes when swiping home and not everyone's experiencing that. So it's a little bit odd. As far as the overall heat of the device, my phone's been nice and cool. Some people have said it's warm and that's what leads me to believe it's probably backing things up, processing, maybe indexing and doing whatever else it needs to do in the background. In the past, Apple has actually used the phone to conduct some tests when they switched over to APFS file system. They did some tests on it before. Maybe they're doing something else where it's using the power of the phone to test something out that they're actually going to change in the future, but we haven't heard anything about that, but they can do those sorts of things they have in the past. So we'll have to wait and see, but the heat overall seems to be nice and cool. And as far as benchmarks as well, benchmarks are really hit or miss and that doesn't matter too much, but I thought I'd run them since I mentioned I would in the what's new video. So we have 1,874 for single core, 5,278 for multi-core. If we go ahead and take a look at the history, you'll see that it's a little bit lower for multi-core and a little bit lower for single core than the last time I ran this. It really varies greatly and I haven't been able to figure out what's going on, 
but as long as it's within a couple hundred, it's not too much of an issue. So I really wouldn't pay too much attention to that. Battery life is more the concern and it seems to be getting better day by day. Now, like I mentioned a moment ago, iOS 16.1 is expected to release on Monday. I would expect that on Monday, along with iPad OS 16.1, Mac OS 13 Ventura. Apple actually said that publicly and it's on their website. And if we go to Apple's website and we scroll over to iPad OS, You'll see here, if we scroll down just a little bit, it actually says it's available on 1024. So Monday, the same is true with Mac OS. So if we go into here, go to Mac, and then we scroll over, give it just a moment to load, scroll over to Mac OS Monterey, then scroll down, you'll see it says Mac OS Ventura and it says available 1024. Apple has also said that Fitness Plus will be available to use without the Apple Watch on Monday, which means you'll need iOS 16.1. So all of those things along with tvOS and HomePod OS 16.1 are expected on Monday. And that leads me to, should you install iOS 16.1 when it releases on Monday? Well, I would say absolutely if you're on 16.0.3. We'll have security updates, of course, new features and bug fixes. That doesn't mean any software is going to be perfect. Apple's going to resolve issues over time. That's just the way software goes. So unless there's some major bug and they haven't fixed it by then where maybe the phone crashes or something else, then I really wouldn't pay too much attention to it. Otherwise I would go ahead and install that. However, if you want to stay on betas, we can expect iOS 16.2 betas either this coming week or the following week. Typically Apple will release them a day or two after or the week after that. So we'll have iOS 16.2 betas and then we'll go into those betas until 16.3 and then probably 16.7 or 16.8 by the end when we have iOS 17 next September. So that's typically what they do. Now, if we go to Safari, you'll see that we have new iPads coming out along with iPad pro. If you want me to do a video about those, let me know in the comments below. I do plan to at least take a look at the regular iPad, but again, let me know if you want to know sp something specifically about these or something else. I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Now let's go ahead and take a look at what you had to say about iOS 16.1. So we'll go back to the YouTube community poll. And again, at the time of this video, there's 12,000 votes more than that, probably and 159 comments. Only 22% of you say that it's great. 3% say it's terrible. That's pretty normal at this point. 8% say it's okay, but has bugs. 59% of you have not upgraded yet. So you're on 16.0.3 or older and 7% are using iOS 15.7 or older. Now let's go ahead and take a look at some of your comments. Chris says overall iOS 16.1 RC is great. It does have a few odd bugs. One recurring bug is the Apple app store failing to load with an unexpected error. Battery life is okay. And performance is smooth and buttery using my iPhone 14 pro. I did forget to mention that about this one recurring bug where some people are saying the app store is failing to load. That could be just a website thing that they need to upgrade in the background though. Treebard 86 says it's better than iOS 16.0 on my iPhone 12 because it's way more responsive and less buggy, but have an issue with the music app lagging to play music when switching from Wi-Fi to data connections. But other than that, it's been great, but it could just be my cellular connection in my area though. Love the battery icon with the percentage and animation. The keyboard seems more accurate with the haptic feedback. Animations seem smoother. The lock screen now playing is much improved from iOS 16 and the interface in settings and on the lock screen for change and adding wallpaper is much improved too. M says it's been really good. Battery life has definitely improved on my 14 pro max, but I still get that occasional and annoying stutter when exiting apps. M Gerald Vano says overall iOS 16.1 RC is excellent. I've noticed some extra drain on my battery, but nothing concerning. Plus, I know with these betas and the final release, it takes a bit for everything to come up to speed. Makia or Mikea, hopefully I'm saying that properly. I would say so far, iOS 16.1 RC has been really good on my iPhone SE 3, except the battery life, which for me has been slightly worse than beta 5. Also, when playing Asphalt 9, it gets really hot. Red Ranger Gaming said so far, iOS 16.1 RC is great. However, I was listening to music earlier through Apple Music and it just stopped all of a sudden. Didn't take my AirPods Pro out of my ears 
pictures or anything. Opened the app and the whole app had reset and it said nothing was playing. So I don't know if that's a bug with my iPhone 14 Pro or the beta itself. Love the videos, can't wait to see more. Thank you. So that's everything with iOS 16.1. Hopefully we get an updated version on Monday when it releases to the public, but if it's the same build, then we just had it a bit early. If you're wanting to get off of the betas, you can remove the beta profile. And if the build is updated on Monday with a new version, you'll get that anyway, since it's released to the public. But if you want to stay on betas, maybe get iOS 16.2, keep the beta profile installed so that you can get the next update when it releases. But either way, let me know how it's going for you on your device and what you're using. And of course, if you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, I'll link it in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.